Hey, what's going on guys? It is your boy here, of course, the combat consultant, the soundboard god, Jacob Kuberman. And I'm in the car right now because I have to go Uber, but I did want to give my breakdown, my honest thoughts on the most recent round of the Kingpin tournament. Thought it was good. Didn't get to catch all the fights just because I had a sparring session and I was recording a podcast with the guys over at CT Combat Sports over in Connecticut. But I did see uh, what I would described to be the fights that mattered. And I, I, I'm i sorry if that offends anyone, uh, but I, I saw about the last five fights, especially with the Bellator and BKFC standouts, and then a little bit of the Ellie Brook fight, or excuse me, the Emily Brook fight, the Emily Brook fight with, uh, with Barbie, and then obviously those three last uh, fights. Thought it was good. Thought it was a step up from last round. I don't think still that it was necessarily the most entertaining product in the world. I've seen much more entertaining products, i.e. in the UFC, even in the PFL. <clears throat> I could see uh, or I could point to a much more entertaining uh, build up and entertaining fight product on the night. Uh, but what I really want to talk about is this King Kenny performance, man. What a performance by King Kenny insane stuff. I like what Wade said at the commentary table. I thought it was one of the most emphatic and one of the best performances, if not probably the best performance. In fact, let me just go out and say this, the best performance in influencer boxing history. Uh, the best performance over any KSI knockout. I'd take that over any uh, King, or excuse me, well, I mean, King Kenny previously knocked out some of his opponents. I'd take it any over any of his knockouts. I'd take it over any of Salt Poppy's knockouts. Man, this was, I don't know how else to describe this other than an instant classic fight. One of those moments, I don't necessarily agree with Wade when he says it's one of those you had to be there type of moments because I don't think anyone's checking for influence or boxing right now. But for those people that tune into the scene that are there and that do love to watch these events, these fights, we will know this fight is probably the best for now fights in the scene, man. And, and I got to say, watching King Kenny develop super duper proud of just how far he's come from losing that close decision to Ashley Raksu to now beating a highly touted prospect, a guy that I thought could have easily taken that fight in in Winderson Nunes. Man, I mean, making him look, listen, I, I don't wanna be disrespectful, but making him look kind of silly. I, 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 it's called a spade a spade. Making him look a level below where Kenny was at. And so that begs the question, where is the rest of the scene in relation to Kenny? Or should I say, where's Kenny in relation to the rest of the scene? Is Gibb gonna be able to present a present and thorough threat to him in the next round? I don't really know. I thought he had a similar performance against Jarvis, obviously not as dominant, but he did take away a lot of Jarvis's weapons and kind of wear down upon him as the fight progressed. It should still be interesting, but I also feel as though we, we kind of can tell who the winner of this tournament is, right? We, we can kind of tell, the men's bracket. It's King Kenny. And whether you think that's a bad thing or a good thing, uh, depending on how much you want people to tune in to this next round, uh, that's debatable, right? Because we have a guy that's entertaining and fun to watch in King Kenny, but we also have, we have a feeling now that this is, we, we know what the outcome is gonna be, at least from the men's bracket, the men's tournament. Uh, they could throw in some more wildcard fights. I thought those fights were really, really fun tonight. But I think nobody's going to disagree that, hey, King Kenny gets the rest of this tournament if he wants to. And could easily take over the rest of the influencer boxing world if he wanted to. Because Anthony Taylor made Salt Poppy look human. Uh, KSI looks human, even though he's had emphatic knockout wins. There was that controversy with the elbow. I, I don't really see a guy that's going to be able to step up and challenge King Kenny in a big way. And perhaps that's a much bigger challenge now for this uh, for this influencer boxing scene to find a dude that really can step toe to toe with him. I thought the product elevated definitely a little bit. Uh, would I watch the finals? I don't know. I'd have to think more on that. Maybe not. It's it's tough to tell at this point. But I will, depending on who they get in there, maybe tune in to see the highlights, something like that. I have to still watch the rest of the fights from tonight. But do let me know what you think down in the comment section below. It's a quicker video. Uh, I just wanted to give my, my genuine, honest thoughts, reactions. Uh, will DAZN pick them up for the final round? That's another thing we have to think about. Maybe they don't. I'd have to see the viewership ratings. I know I totally legally streamed it, of course. Uh, so I didn't go through DAZN, but I'd be curious to see what type of numbers DAZN is pulling here. But without further ado, this has been your boy, the combat consultant, the soundboard god, Jacob Cooperman. And stay tuned for the next video. Deuces.